So guys, let's have a dialogue. I want us to have a conversation towards what John Michael Obi said about a serious problem here in Africa concerning our national team football. But then I'm going to be very honest. When John Michael Obi started this podcast, not many people liked him, especially he sticks on certain topics. It does not go well with the general public. But then, for the first time, I'm going to agree with him on this particular one. He said it very well, and I believe it is something we need to champion. But then, before we jump into it, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and also turn on notification. Now, John Michael Obi is with the view that Africa is not the second choice when it comes to nationality switch, especially players who were not born in Africa here and they have the opportunity to represent two countries. Africa is not a second choice. If you have not seen the video yet, please watch this so that we can have a base for our conversation. Let's check it out. Players not representing their, their African roots. We've held meetings with these kids, with their parents, and said, listen, you are from Nigeria. Your dad is Nigerian. Your mom is Nigerian. Why don't you present your fatherland, Nigeria? No, 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 no. We want to play for, for England, France, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And then they keep waiting and keep waiting and they don't get a call up from England. Yeah. Then they call Nigeria. We shouldn't be treated as second options. We are not second options. You should be proud of your African roots. You should be proud to represent your African country. So don't treat us as a second option. We are not second option. I want the best uh -huh. players to play in Africa. So you rather make a decision and stand by it. Yeah. If you decide you want to play for England, s stick to it. If you don't get a call up, you don't get a call up. But don't wait until 29, 30, you've passed your best, whatever it is. Then you're, oh, Nigerian FA, I'm ready to play for you now. No, fuck off, mate. So guys, you have heard from John Bikal Obi. See, there is a saying that, hate the man, but don't hate the message. You might not like John Bikal Obi. But what he said is pure fact. He said something that will take years to see. He said something that other ex-players will only dream of saying or will not be able to say it. Probably they have not identified it. And this is a very serious problem. I have always been with the view that Africa is not a second choice. Especially when I heard Dominic Solanke wanted to switch nationality and play for Nigeria. Like you had to sit down for that long. Because England didn't call you, you now did a U10 and come to Africa, you come to Nigeria. And I like what DR Congo has done so far. They are the ones setting the pace so that other African countries can follow. You all know Wan Bisaka, right? Same scenario. DR Congo wanted Wan Bisaka at the point. Wan Bisaka told them no. He was waiting for an England caller. He thought he was on top of the world. Only for England to tell him that, see, let's be very honest. Your position that you play, we have a lot of players who are better than you. For one Bissaka to do a youth hand, go back to DR Congo, telling them in a letter that, oh, he wants to come back to the motherland and play for DR Congo to him, no. We are not the second choice. If this is how we should be doing it. There is a similar situation here in Ghana. If, if, if I tell you that Ghana is still in pursuit of Eddie and Kitia, and Callum was in order, would you believe me? It's as if that we don't have their type in the, in the national team. It's as if without them, we can't move forward. Or it's as if if you have these two people in the national team, they tend to solve your problem. They do not solve it. My problem is, these two players were, were talked to. They were even, World Cup was used to even convince these players. They both said no. They, was, they said they were waiting for England corner. To a point where both players even had a chance to enter into the England team. For Eden Kitia, he played like one game. I mean, Callum Botinodoy, I don't know for him. He also played like one game or so. Since then, England has not even looked at them anymore. And that is the truth. But then, the time Ghana was speaking to Eden Kitia, was speaking to Callum Botinodoy, these two players were on top form for their club side. They are still young. But then, we have tried so many times. Why should we try again? I mean, we are making it look like the other talents in the country or the other talents in Africa here are not in now. If these players feel like they were not born here and did not have a connection to Africa, why not? They should go where they feel they have a connection to. As simple as that. And I like the fact that John Michael Kobe has stressed on the fact that when you are in your big years, and you do not agree to play for the African country you are eligible to play for. Do not dare 
do not even try to call the association when you drop off form. When you are in your peak here, you are in your 23, 24, 25, and they want you and do not come. Don't try to call the association when you are in your 28, 29, 30. When you have lost for, we don't want to hear from you again. As simple as that. And that is the truth. What I'm trying to say is that we are not against nationality switch. What we are against is that players taking Africa for granted, not showing Africa the respect it has. It's not like we don't want quality players in Africa here. When we are playing Africa, we want to see the best of the best playing in Africa. But then in a situation where an African country becomes a backup choice for you. No. When you are falling off form, that is when you decide to come and play for the national team. It's disrespect to the nation. And this is what John Bikanobi is trying to point out. This whole nationality switch thing, we need, to, we need to wake up. That is why I like South Africa a lot. They just use home-based players. As simple as at any time they play, you could see that there is some sort of style and identity to the way they play. The South Africans, they are a typical example of no nonsense. That is how Nigeria, Ghana, other countries should, should be doing. Because as I'm talking to you now, Nigeria also facing the same dilemma. Dominic Solari, the same issue. It's not like he's a bad player, he's a good player. But then sometimes you need to put your pride and your, you know, your respect up there. It's not like you don't have Dominic Solanke type in Nigeria Super Idol setup. This is type times three. But then him adding the squad wouldn't be bad because he brings quality. But the fact that he considered Nigeria as a second choice is where my problem is. Let's consider this like a relationship. You get me? In a relationship, you like a girl, but she considers you like a rebound or a, a second choice, a backup option. The time she has a problem with the main boyfriend, she comes to you. How would you feel? I know some people, they like to be side boys because, I mean, who doesn't want to be a side boy? But then, let's say it's a serious relationship. You are only considered in the picture when the girl has a problem with the main boyfriend. How would you feel? Even if you're a girl, consider yourself in that same circus. So, I mean, Africa deserves some sort of respect from this place. And it's very clear Obi Mikel nailed it with the example he set. And you can see the statement here. And I feel like it is something we need to champion. It is something we need to have a conversation about. The FAs need to sit up. It's not like any player from anywhere comes in his 30s and then he decides that oh, no key because England or France did not call me now. I want to carry a play for the African team. I think Ghana has done that mistake before with Inaki Williams. It should never repeat itself again. When we wanted Inaki Williams in his prime stages when he was very young, he told us he did not feel Ghanaian. He did not feel like he was part of Ghana. Now that he is going, that he's getting close to his 30s. Now he decided to play for us. It has happened once. It shouldn't happen again. It shouldn't happen again. It shouldn't happen again. This is this is a serious issue that other countries need to need to you know take serious. Congo has crawled two week work. They have taken an action against Errol and Bisaka. They should make sure they do it to some of the big players that would put some service in other young players coming up. They would make the right decision. As simple as that. So guys, this is why I end today's video. Let me know your thoughts about it. What John Mikan Ubi said. Today, I'm going to say the truth. I support him 100%. I'm normally not a big fan of John Mikan Ubi on his stance and everything. I feel like sometimes he talks too much. But this this particular point he made, I salute you, sir. You have made a very great point. I salute you, John Mikan Ubi. Please continue to do the Lord's work. My name is Adam. I'll make sure to see you in the next one. Charlie, we go back.